Well, there I was, standing on the edge, looking, looking down, seven years old. You know, and at seven years old, 12 feet down is like forever, you know. But for two weeks, for two weeks, they had, they had worked with us and trained us and taught us all these things about, you know, what to do if you got yourself in trouble and, 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 and how, how, to, how to stay afloat and all these kind of things. But at seven years old, when you're learning how to swim, and you're standing on the high diving board as the final day. That's the test. You have to jump off, you know, and fall into the water and then swim to the edge. It's, it's like scary, if, especially if you're afraid of heights. And I was scared to death of heights. I don't know why. As far as I know, there's been no traumatic event in my life that had uh, put me in a position of having to jump off of something. But there I was standing on the very edge, and I, and I was scared to death about jumping off. And I, and I felt fairly confident in my ability to swim, but I never had to jump off of anything like that. You know, the amazing thing happens when you step off the end of the diving board is you are totally committed once you do that. You're all in. There's no, there's no getting back. There's no, you know, there's no climbing back up to catch the diving board. You just have to step off. Now, other kids in the class, they, 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 they just got up there and ran off the end and jumped off like it was nothing to it. But me, I, I was, it was a death walk out to the end of that board. And, of course, everybody, don't look, just jump. And, of course, my, you know, that's the exact opposite of what happens. You're just staring off, looking at it's a long way down there. It's a long way down there. But once you jump, you're all in. And then you realize. Hey, that wasn't too bad. That wasn't so bad. But you're all in. You know, living life is a lot like that. And especially following God as a Christ follower, it, there is a there is a time that there, there, there's there's this seed in us that we we have to let grow in us of being all in, because we because our nature is to hold it back. Our nature is to keep it buried, because there's something about having to be all in. Is because you can't go back. You can't go back when you're all in. And so we're going to look today at the at the last chapter, of the Gospel of John. With this group of guys, there was this group of guys that had been following Jesus around and believing Jesus and seeing all the miracles uh, that Jesus had done and, and being awed like everybody else is like, wow. I mean, they they'd seen blind people made. Uh, have have sight. They've seen people who'd been who, who'd been crippled from their childhood be able to get up and walk. They they'd seen they'd even seen a dead man walk out of a grave. They'd seen thousands of people fed with just a a, a kid sack lunch. That that, that had, it had been an amazing three year journey to all of this. But then but then this miracle working leader that they had been following around, this person that was going to change the world for them, died. Died. And, and, and as, as the people around it said, others he, others he could save, others he could redeem, others he could heal, but he can't save himself. What kind of leader is that? And if you've ever been through an experience of huge disappointment in your life, you know how you feel when that happens. That's these guys. And they're struggling. They're struggling with it. And even though by this time in the story that John writes to us, that Jesus had reappeared to them numerous times, there was still this, this edge of disappointment that lived in them. They, they didn't know what to do with themselves. John says in the closing verse of John 20, he said, I, I'm writing these things to you, to all of you, to all of you who follow Christ, because you need, you need to know this. Notice what he says in verse 20. He says, these things are written that you might believe. Believe. You see, the, the biggest element of being all in and, the, and following this seed of commitment, of being all in, is that you have to believe. You have to believe. John said, I'm writing you the, these things so that you might 
believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. The Son of God. I'm writing that you might be all in. And that by, by believing, you may have life in His name. Life in His name. And that becomes so important for us to understand that, that to be all in, we have to believe. There's a lot of things in life that call, call on us to be all in. That, that day, standing on the edge of that diving board, jumping off, that was an all-in moment. As the term goes, sink or swim. That's what was happening. I was either When I hit the water, I was either going to swim or I was going to sink. And of course, everybody's fear is that you'll sink. No matter how many lessons you've had is, what if I don't come back up? But you have to believe that what you've been taught and what you've been practicing is going to work. John says, I'm writing these things, these, these stories to you about, about Jesus and what and, and that you so that you will believe, so that you can be all in. Now, this group of guys, you know, that, that's the great thing about the Bible. Pe people try to make Christianity into something like it's all rosy and, no, and every, anybody that ever follows Jesus never has any problems and no doubt. And, and, and the, the thing about the Bible is God's so real. God's so honest with us. The Bible is full of people who, had, who believed God, who followed God, but they had doubts and they had troubles and they had struggles because that's how, that's how life is. And, and John doesn't hold anything back. He didn't paint this rosy picture. Everything's going to turn out all right. Everybody's going to be okay. No, John, John paints a real picture. He said, after the death of Jesus, there's a group of us that had troubles, and he's one of them. He said, our, our, our fearless second-in-command, Peter, he's with us. And, and, and then, yeah, we had one of those people that every group has. It's Thomas the Doubter, the guy who just like, he, he just didn't never get it. You know, and, and then me and, and me and my brother, James, the sons of thunder, we're, we're there and a couple other disciples. And, and we're sitting around trying to figure out what in the world do we do now? Because what we thought we were all in and we thought this was going to be the greatest thing that ever happened. And, and, and now we don't, we're not too sure about that. And our fearless second in command leader said, let's just go fishing. Let's just go back to what we've always known to do. See, these men, these men had grown up in the fishing industry. They were commercial fishermen of their day. That's what they knew. They'd been doing that since they were boys. And that's what they knew to do. Matter of fact, three, three, back up three years prior to this day, that's what they'd been doing. And, and Jesus came along and called them and said, come follow me, and they went all in. at that. They, the Bible says they laid down their nets and left their boats, and they followed Jesus. They thought they were all in. But here they are three years later thinking, hey, let's go back and do that. Because at least we know what that is. This thing that we thought was going to be it, let me spend the next uh, 10, 15 minutes with you, walk you through six things I think that will help us all understand what do we have to do to be all in. All in. And there's, six, there's six things that I think we see in this passage that helps us. In chapter 21, John kind of lays it out for us, is that you're going to come up against things in life that are going to challenge you being all in. And sometimes you're not going to feel like you were all in. You're going to think, I, I, I thought I was in. Now I'm out. Because disappointment happens. Trouble happens. Struggles happen. Sometimes, as, as we say in the mechanic world, the wheels all come off. Things come apart. What we thought was all worked out doesn't work out in life. So, they go fishing. All it took was one person who said, let's go fishing, and everybody else said, we'll go with you. We'll go with you. And so they, they got out in the boat, but they didn't catch anything. That thing that they thought was going to help them didn't help them. 
They fished all night, as it was common in that day and time. And, it, and when the morning came about, they, they saw this guy standing on the shore. Standing on the shore. And, and he, this person on the shore, as, as it always is true, hey, did you catch anything? No, we hadn't caught anything. He says, well, try throwing your net on the other side. Try fishing in a different spot. Because that, that's human. That's, that's how we are in humans. Is we, we tend to do what we always do. Expect to get different results. Try fishing in a different spot. I remember growing up with my dad, we would go fishing on, on Lake Sam Rayburn every summer, two weeks. Well, maybe two weeks. It seemed like two weeks when you're you know, 10, 11, 12 years old. I, th I think it was only a week. But we'd go fishing. We'd catch three or 400 fish a day. I mean, by, 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 the, by the third or fourth day, you didn't want to see another fish. You didn't care about seeing any fish. Now, the fishing part, the catching part was great. That was the fun part. It was the other part that was not so great. Because that's back in the day before they had all this automa automation stuff. I remember the summer that we pulled, we, we went to the bait house and they had this newfangled machine that would scale them automatically. It looked like a big washing machine. You just threw all your fish in there, put your money in, and it turned them around. And most of the sales were all gone. It's like, oh, wow, this is cool. Because when you're catching three or 400, that, and it's your chore to get the scales off. It's no fun. No fun. But I remember on numerous occasions, we would pull up to these stumps and we'd put our line in the water, you know, and, and we wouldn't catch anything. And then, and then somebody in the boat would put their, their line at the other, on the other side of the boat and they'd catch one. And then they'd catch another one. And so everybody would move over to the other side of the boat. And, and, it, and it's just like what Jesus said to these guys. He said, just, just, hey, try it on the other side. And, and, and so they did. And, and, and their net, they caught all these fish. And then it dawned on somebody in the boat, the guy writing the story, his name's John. Hey, wait a minute, we, this has happened before. This, this has happened to us before. That, that voice has told us to do this before, and we did it. And, and he, he, he says to the, the second in command, the fearless leader, Peter, he said, I think that's Jesus. That's Jesus talking to us. And the Bible says, it gives us a very important, the very first thing, it is if you're going to be committed and all in, you have to get out of the boat. You have to get out of the boat. And in this case, as a Christian, you have to get out of the boat and go to Jesus. See, we all get comfortable in our little capsule in life of the things that we, that we like, the things that are normal to us, the things that, that make us feel good, the things that, that give us kind of some sense of belonging. We, we like that. But but to, get all, to be all in, you have to get out of your boat and go to Jesus. You have to get out of your boat to be all in. Same thing true in a marriage. You have to you get out of the boat. The Bible just talks about that. It says uh, it, when, a, when a couple gets married, they're, they're to leave their other relationships and be all in. And when that doesn't happen, guess what? There's problems. So when you, when you don't get out of your boat and get all in, the Bible says Peter got out of his boat, got out of the boat, and swam to the shore to Jesus. The other guys, John's details, he says, we rowed the boat back in with all the fish. But you got to get out of the boat if you're going to be all in. you got to get out of your boat and be all in. Be all in. Notice, notice what it says. And as, soon, and as soon as Simon Peter heard him say, it is the Lord... He wrapped his outer garment around him, which he had taken off, and he jumped into the water. And, of course, swam to shore. And the other disciples, who followed him in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they weren't too far from shore, about 100 yards. And when they landed, they saw that fish was burning on the, on the fire along with some bread. And Jesus said to them, bring some of your fish that you have caught. And so they got the fish and they, they, they brought it to Jesus. But the first thing is you got to get out of your boat if you're going to be all in. The second thing that you have to do, as we see happens here, Jesus said, 
get your stuff, get your feet, come over here and let's sit down and let's eat. Notice the scripture says, and, the, and they did that. They even counted them, which, you know, fishermen, you gotta count, you gotta have a story, right? If you if you go fishing and you catch fish, you gotta have a story. So John makes sure that that we know that as normal fishermen would do, we caught 153 fish. More than we'd ever maybe caught before, but we caught a lot of fish. You know, saying a lot is not near as impressive as we caught 153. It's not near as impressive to say, oh, we caught a few fish as it is to say we caught three or four hundred. That's pretty, you know, that's pretty impressive. And I'm not kidding. I mean, I mean I'm mean, i like, oh, no. It's kind of like, let's don't go tomorrow. I remember telling my dad that a few times. Let's still get up and go. Let's stay in. Because you knew what was coming. You couldn't help yourself. It's kind of like this story. And Jesus said to them in verse 12, Come and let's have breakfast. See, the second thing about being all in, committing all in, is you, you, have, you have to be willing to have fellowship with that. In this case, it was with Jesus. But you have to be willing to sit down at the table of whatever it is you're, you're going to be all in about. In the, in, the, in the case of a Christian, it's it's you have to be willing to sit down at the table with Jesus. See, that's 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 part of what's wrong, I think, for for many of us in, in the Christian world is is we're willing to come to church and we're willing to sing and we're willing to do this and we're willing to do that. We're not willing to sit down. We're not willing to sit down at the feet of Jesus. We're not willing to sit down at the fellowship table with Jesus. We want to do all this other stuff. We want to pull in the net. and We want to clean the fish. and We want to clean the nets. We want to build the fire, but we don't want to sit down at the table. But see, for you to be all in, you've got to be willing to fellowship with Jesus. This thing, this person that you're going to be all in with. And for all these guys, it was a struggle. Because they'd already done this once. They'd left all that they had and they followed Jesus. And now he was telling, asking them one more time. He said, guys... To, to really be all in, we need to sit down here and have, a, have breakfast together. John points out a very important thing. He said, not one of them dared to ask, is this really you, Jesus? Is this really you, Jesus? Cause, they, they, there was, because they had not yet be, believed the situation that they were in. They struggled. They were still struggling. And that's going to be true until you sit down and have fellowship with Jesus. And once they did, once they did that, once they sat down, again, all in, not standing around playing with the fish and counting the fish again to make sure they were 153, not cleaning the nets like they were supposed to do as good fishermen, not checking the boat to make sure everything was good with the boat, but they had to sit down with Jesus and have fellowship with Jesus. They had to be all in. None of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? They realized it was the Lord. And Jesus, how did they know? Because Jesus did something he had done with them numerous times. The scripture says, And Jesus took bread and gave it to them, and, and as with the fish. In other words, Jesus met their need. Jesus supplied for them this moment of fellowship. And we're, we're all in. That happened. God will fellowship with us. This is the third time, John points out, this is the third time Jesus had met with them after he had been raised from the dead. Important to note that, that it took three times for them to really get it. took them three times coming into the moment to sit down with Jesus. But that's so true. So when we think about it, you've got to get out of your own boat. You've got to be willing to have fellowship. That is, you have to be willing to gather around and get up close with Jesus if you're going to be all in. You can't, you can't keep hanging out on the outside. Then the third thing, you're, you're going to face this inevitable as, as you go in through this process. It's going to happen to us. It's going to, be ha it's going to happen to us. And So when they finished eating, the Scripture said, Jesus said to Peter, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me more than 
these guys? Do you truly love me more than these guys? So the third thing that's going to happen in this all-in thing, it's kind of like standing on the edge of the diving board and, and jumping off. You have to wake up. You're going to get a wake-up call to be all in. You have to wake up to your problem. And Jesus, Jesus just put it right there in front of Peter. He said, Peter, more than anything else and everything else, do you really love me? Do you really love me? See, that, that's the thing about being all in. There comes that moment, that crisis of belief moment. And whatever else it is that you're not sure about, that you have to let go of. It's a wake-up call. For me, standing on the edge of that diving board looking off into that water, it was like, okay, everything they taught me better be true because here it goes. Here it goes. But that was that call because, because I had watched other kids in my class walk out there and walk back and climb down. I watched other kids go right up that ladder, get on that board and take a running start and just jump off. See, there, there comes this moment you have to decide and wake up to your own doubts, your own problem, and say, am I going to be all in? Jesus, in this fellowship moment, you're going to find that to be true. God's going to say, are you all in? Are you all in? And he asked Peter, he said, do you love me more than everything else here? Jesus said, I mean, Peter said, yes, Lord. You know that I do. You know that I do. And then Jesus gave him an assignment. See, that's the thing about being all in. Is that, is that when you make the commitment to all in, you're going to have an assignment. A lot of times, I, I, what, what happens with people is, is, is that they want to all in, but they don't want to have to do anything beyond the all in. It's like, isn't that good enough? Isn't that good enough? I mean, we, I, you know, I give my money, I pray for people, I come to church, I do this, I do that. But, but you really want me to do more than that? Jesus' answer is, yeah, I've got something for you to do. It's going to involve you in this all-in commitment. The fourth thing that we see, Jesus tells us it's going to happen when we have to make this all-in move. You're going to have to be, you're going to have to determine in this all-in thing that you're going to be obedient no matter what. Because as it kind of went on there for a moment, Jesus asked him again, just to, be, just to be clear, Peter, just to be clear, do you truly love me? Now the word truly there is interesting in that passage. And in some versions you'll find this to be true. It's the only way for us to understand an ongoing content of a word is to add the L-Y to it. Because that's in English language, we, we have some sort of restrictions. Because basically... What Jesus was saying to him is, 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 Simon, do you really, 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 really always going to love me? It's the idea of it goes on to the future. It's not a one time, yeah, I love you, but it's a commitment of life to do that. And Jesus said to us and to, and to Peter, he said, Peter, you're going to have to decide you really do love me and be obedient to that. So Jesus, Jesus asked him, said, do you truly love me? See, when we're going to get all in, when we, when we step off the diving board and we're headed down, we, we have to realize it's like, okay, there's some things that are happening because God put some principles in place. I wasn't going to suddenly get wings and, and, and float down to the water. I mean, I was just dropping like a rock. I was going to hit that water and two things were going to happen. When I hit that water, either, either I was going to swim like I'd been taught to, or I was going to sink to the bottom like a rock. You know what? If you practice what you've been taught, if you're obedient to the, to the law, in this case, into, 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 into the principle of swimming, you just pop right back up and you can start swimming. You can start swimming. And I had noticed that from numerous people that took a flying run off of that thing and hit the water and they came right back up and they swam right over to the side. And Jesus is telling us that. He said, look, 
when, when you go all in, you have to realize you're going to have to be obedient to the principles of the kingdom. The things that make this work. You're going to have to be obedient to that. Peter, I'm not asking you, do you love me at this moment? I'm asking you, are you going to stay in love with me and be all in? All in. Interesting. Peter responds back. Lord, you, you know I do. You know I do. And Jesus said, okay, I've got something for you to do. I want you to take care of, of, of my sheep. I want you to take care of others that are, you're going to find in this same boat. So then we find the fifth one, the fifth thing. Jesus asked him again a third time, Simon, do you love me? Now, the Scripture tells us that Peter was pretty exasperated by this point. I mean, he was, his feelings were hurt. His feelings were hurt. John points out, it must have been something that John could sense with Peter. He said, Peter's feelings were hurt. It was like, how many times are you going to ask me this? How many times are you going to ask me this? said, Lord, you know all things. And you know, you know, you know, you know I love you. And I'm sure about that, Tom. And his little memory bell went off. And he was reminded, wait a minute. Three times before in my life I've been asked, do I love Jesus? And three times I denied that I love Jesus. And he's asking me again, do you love Jesus? And what we see, the fifth thing, when you're all in, that has to happen, because here's what Jesus tells him. He said, okay, feed my sheep, and I'll tell you the truth, that when you were younger, you dressed yourself, and you, you lived life, you did what you wanted to do, but, but when you're old, You'll have to stretch out your hand and somebody else will have to, to dress you and, and, and take care of you and lead you wherever you want to go. And John writes a little commentary for us and says, Jesus told him that to indicate that, that what kind of death that Peter was going to die. In other words, Peter was not going to wind up in the, in, the, in the place where people tend to want to put everybody who follows Jesus and that everything's going to work out okay. See, the fifth thing you and I have to do is you, you and I, when we go all in, we have to take on a cause bigger, bigger than ourselves. It has to be bigger than us. Jesus is calling and asking Peter, said, are you saying that you love me? You're going to have to take on this cause bigger than you. Because so up to this point, life's been about you. Life's been about you. And you're going to have to, you're going to, have to take on something that's not about you. It's going to have to be bigger than you. Have to be bigger than you. And then the sixth one that Jesus said, for you and I to be all in, you have to be willing to be led all in. Because Jesus, for the final time, said to these guys, He said to them, follow me. Then follow me. And Peter turned and saw that the disciples whom Jesus loved was following. Which tells me there for a moment that Peter had a, a crisis of belief here. And as in most people, he either gazed off or looked down. And as he thought they what. What, 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 am I, what am I stepping off into here? And when he looked up, he saw that Jesus was walking away. And then John, the writer of the story, he, he was following Jesus, just like Jesus had said, follow me. Follow me. See, because for you to be all in, at, at a point there has to be that last follow me and there's no turning back. There's no going back. There's no second... There's no second and third and fourth time. This is it. 
You either are all in or you're not. You're all in or you're not. And, and when Peter came to grips with that and looked up, Jesus was already walking and, and John was already following. And he had to go and catch up with Jesus. So just like that moment when I stood on the edge of that diving board and I took that leap off and I hit the water and I popped back up and realized, hey, I, I didn't sink to the bottom and swam to the side realized I had conquered something in my life. I had conquered something that would let me be all in. All in. So your life and my life, that's what God calls on us to do. Is, is to release this seed of commitment so that we can be all in. We can be all in. And those six things that we see in this passage can help us get to that final time where we say, I'm all in. It's because never again was Peter would Peter doubt or display any kind of struggle about being all in. Peter would find himself in numerous situations beyond this, and there was never, 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 ever again did Peter deny Christ. Never and ever again did Peter turn away. Never, ever again, Peter went all the way to his death. And history says that he died crucified upside down for his faith. But he was all in. All in. So today, we should probably ask ourselves that question. What can we do about being all in? Let's pray. Father, thank you today that you love us and, and that you give us the opportunity, the opportunity to be all in. So God, for, for some of us, we, we need help getting out of the boat. We need something bigger than what we're looking at right now to say, I'm getting out of the boat. I'm getting out of the boat. Or God, for some of us, may, maybe it, it's the fact that we need to Quit playing Christianity and have fellowship with you. God, for, God, for some of us, it's, it's we need to answer the question of obedience. Will I, will I really be all in? Will I really be all in this time? Maybe we need to look at something bigger than ourselves, a cause beyond us that we can commit to and be all in. All in. God, help us to do that today. God, forgive me when I have failed to be all in. When you call on me to be all in. God help me to go from this day forward and be all in. So that as John wrote, that as I read this story and I hear this story and I see it in the lives of others, that I might believe in Him and have life everlasting. Thank you that you would do that for us. That you would be the example and live your life all in, so that we might have eternal life. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Joe?